the word fat seems to have a, a negative connotation, but there's we do need fat. Can you talk about that and what are good fats and, and what they can do for us, why they're important? Well, I think uh, back in the 70s when McGovern and his uh, Senate Select Committee banished fat from our diet, that was a big mistake for our waistlines, but I think it was uh, a big mistake for our brains because the brain is two-thirds fat. When you get rid of the water, get the water out of the brain, we're all fat heads, okay? And where does that functional fat come from? And it is functional fat because the way the brain works is one nerve cell talks to another, and if the nerve cells aren't flexible, they can't change and respond to incoming signals. And there are trillions of signals that are exchanged between nerve cells every second. So you need to eat fats that keep your nerve cells flexible and responsive. And the government has banished fat pretty much across the board, so that means bad fats and good fats, and that's how the brain suffers. And good fats, our mothers many years ago told us, are in fish. Fish is brain food. Why is that the case? Because fish contain long chain omega-3 fatty acids, which we've all heard about, mm -hmm. and they prevent fish from freezing because they're flexible at, at low temperatures. That same characteristic keeps our nerve cells flexible and responsive. And a deficiency in omega-3 fatty acids that we get from cold water fish, I think, contributes to the epidemic of ADD and ADHD. So omega-3s from fish are real brain food. There are also a number of omega-3s that are maybe not as long as those in cold water fish that occur in many plant foods, such as flax seeds, pumpkin seeds, walnuts, green leafy vegetables, and so forth. And those are both a great energy source for the brain. They can energize the brain without producing a sugar crash. And they also keep the membranes flexible. Another fat which has really been given a bad name in the past because it contains saturated fat is coconut oil. And coconut oil is a solid at room temperature, but it's great to cook with. And even though it is a saturated fat, it's a medium chain fat. And what that means is it doesn't go to your hips and thighs for fat storage. It goes to your liver where it's turned into a high-octane fuel for the body and for the brain. So those are some of the good fats that we need to be eating. The other thing is if you eat some coconut oil, you'll be surprised. It is a, because it's a good brain fuel, it suppresses appetite for hours. I've had a number okay. of people say, you know, I have a tablespoon full of coconut oil at breakfast and I don't get hungry until dinner. So those are all good, healthy fats. The type of fats that we want to avoid are primarily manufactured fats. They're called trans fats, but they're listed on packages as partially hydrogenated oils, such as partially hydrogenated corn oil, safflower oil, or sunflower oil. So that's the skinny on fat.